Excuse me, sir, is this the Delta House? Sure. Come on in. They have cold beer and action on the game. I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in here. It's time for the Degenerates Next Door. Dollar, dollar, bills, y'all. I knew this would happen. I called it. I knew this was coming. My name is Jason Hammer. Rob Kendall, right across from me. We are the Degenerates Next Door. And I was on too good of a run. I knew this was coming. I was doing a victory lap the previous month, Rob. On this show, I was 16-4 and four on college football. That's a pretty solid run. And last week, coming off of a 5-0, and oh, unbeaten week, I cautioned everyone and said, listen, water finds its level. And not only did water find its level, we had a flood last week. Yeah, here's the thing, Hammer. You were awful. <laughs> but here, here's the... Look, there's a bright spot for me and a bright spot for you. And here's the bright spot for you is I wasn't much better. But the bright spot for me is I was one game better. You were. I was one game better. So you can eat it because one and four is better than one and five. You won one game out of the five last week. And it was the, the spread. It was the Friday game. And again, I was coming off of five and oh. And last week, I got the golden sombrero. Oh, and five, Rob. Yeah. Now listen, we're honest with everybody, just like we are on our radio programs. We share our lives with people. We talk about the successes that we have, but we also talk about the failures. And it was a complete disaster of a week last week. And the thing that frustrates me, is that I know we had some new listeners to the show. Mm-hmm. And I know this because they tweeted at us after the god-awful effort we put out there. One guy writes, hey, I just found your podcast. Everybody was talking about how good you guys were doing. I tailed a lot of your picks and lost my ass. You big, fat, stinking bastard. God, how I hate you. You make me want to puke. That's the kind of thing that bothers me, right? Because yeah, well, I hate that. Well, I don't, and I've been candid about this. I put way more effort into this show than my actual job. My actual number one rated radio show in the city of Indianapolis. I put way more effort into this show. And we feel it. You know, like nobody's, you don't have to beat up on us. We, be, we beat up on ourselves. Right. I went from 22-16-1 against the spread Again, had a rough start to the year. Every bad break that could have happened happened to me. And then we went on a heater. 16 into four run. And now 22, 21, and one. Yeah. Still one stinking game above 500. Uh, some bets were bigger than others, so we're up in units. But man, I hate having that type of a loss. So the way I see it, Rob, we've got a couple options here. Yeah. We can sit around, we can bitch. We can moan, we can complain, or we can pick ourselves up off the ground. Hey, what's this lying around shit? Where's the spirit? Where's the guts? Huh? This could be the greatest night of our lives, but you're going to let it be the worst. Kiss my ass from now on! Not me! I'm not going to take this! And I'm not either. We're going to do things a little differently today, Rob, because you know why? I've got action tonight on a college football game, and not just any action. I've got the damn Degenerate Special tonight. Yeah, I love it, brother. It's time for Hammer's Degenerate Special. So, for those who are new to this show, the Degenerate Special. This is a game that, for the most part, nobody gives a rat's ass about. But Las Vegas cares about it, so therefore we care about it. The money you could win on this game tonight would spend the same as if you get LSU and Texas A&M right this Saturday. And counting week zero, I am six out of nine on degenerate specials. We lost last week because I was gutless. I knew I should have taken the over at 78 and a half, but the big number scared me. Yeah. So let's talk about tonight. Sam Houston at FIU, 
Florida <laughs> International at who? Who? Pitbull Stadium. Who's playing? Sam Houston at FIU. <laughs> now, you know Pitbull, right, Mr. Worldwide? Oh, yeah. This is Pitbull Stadium, and tonight it's Miami Vice Night in the stadium. Oh, this is like a big deal where everybody celebrates Miami Vice and they wear the Don Johnson style outfits. There are special uniform combinations. Sam Houston's coming off a loss, but it's because their quarterback was knocked out of the game last week. He's expected to be back tonight. Now, let me lay this caveat out there. If Sam Houston's quarterback does not play abort, cash your bet out and abort. But if he goes, we're in tonight. Because he's good. In addition to the passing game, he's their leading rusher. And Sam Houston can run the bejesus out of the football. That's their specialty. And FIU, they have a hard time stopping the run. But inside Pitbull Stadium, Mr. Worldwide Stadium, FIU is averaging 37 points per game. So, in the spirit of Bluto lifting me up earlier... There's only one play I think we can make in this game tonight, Rob. Over? Did you say over? Nothing is over until we decide it is. The play is over. Over 46 and a half. Sam Houston, Florida International. That is this week's Degenerate Special. I love it. And I love that Pitbull has a stadium named after him. Pitbull has a stadium named after him. He's got racing teams. He truly is Mr. Worldwide. Yeah, I used to believe, too, when I was younger and going to the clubs, I used to believe I would meet some girl there and I would just start singing the lyrics to Tonight, Give Me Everything Tonight. (laughs) And that's how true love would be found. I used to uh, DJ and host giveaways in the casino, right? I was the marketing guy. I was the hype guy. And we would play Fireball by Pitbull. (laughs) And there was always one guy that had a lighter that would drink the the shot, and then blow out the fireball. <laughs> we were told by casino management to not do that can, anymore. Can I just real quick read you the opening lyrics to that song? And it's Pitbull just narrating. Yes. And the bravado and the machismo of this guy. Me not working hard. Yeah, right. Picture that with a Kodak. And better yet, go to Times Square. Take, take a picture of me with a Kodak. I love that. Put that in a museum. Hang those lyrics in a frame and put it in a museum. I mean, think if you were stupid rich. He's so rich he could just buy the naming rights to a stadium. Right. Pitbull Stadium tonight. And we're riding the lightning. We're going over 46 and a half. Love it. If Sam Houston's quarterback plays. If not, cash your bet out. All right. Let's talk about a game people actually want to watch, Rob. (laughs) LSU at Texas A&M. Texas A&M, two-and-a-half-point home favorite here, over under 53-and-a-half. All right, so I was torn on this because Texas A&M is really, really good at home, even though they lost Notre Dame at home. And Brian Kelly usually just craps his pants in big games. But I got burned on that a couple weeks ago with that Ole Miss game where I took LSU, and they had to lead the whole game and then blew it at the end. And so I was going to take Texas A&M giving two and a half, but then I thought I can't stand the thoughts of losing to Brian Kelly twice in the same year. (laughs) Hate that guy. So here's what I did. I split the difference. All right. We're going to get back to some unders this week because spreads have been killing me. And maybe I'm overthinking this, but Texas A&M has gone under 53 and a half points in five out of seven games. And they're really good at home. That crowd, that 12th man, it's yeah. a difference they, maker. They play some defense. LSU has gone under 53 and a half in four out of seven games. LSU's only played two real road games this year. Texas A&M is a tough place to play, as we said. Total's gone under in four out of LSU's last five games. I'll take under 53 and a half. Rob Kendall, under 53 and a half. LSU at Texas A&M. Can I just say one other thing while we're ranting about how bad we were last week? You know what I hate? When you're out of the game at halftime. <laughs> part, part we were of what out I of the game with Nebraska and it Indiana. Is. Part of what I'm doing here is buying cheap entertainment. And I don't, I didn't even get a half in that game. I didn't even get a quarter. That kid caught the ball out of bounds at the two-yard line on the kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, say what you want about us. 
We're honest with you, and I'm willing to bet every gambler has had a weekend like we've had yeah, last yeah, weekend. Totally. If you do this on a regular, you've had a bad stretch like we had last weekend. Let's find out if our professional has had a stretch like that. Now, Rob, last week, I made the mistake of going toe-to-toe against our professional. Bad move. But really, I was just kind of hedging my bet right. because I'm a Tennessee Volunteers fan. I was going to the game, which was just a religious experience. Yeah. Great experience down there. But like you do with your Chicago Bears right. from time to time, I bet on Alabama. Yeah. Now, Can't I lose. did honestly think Alabama would win the game and cover. But either way, I was going to have some level of joy after the game. I was rooting for my own bet to lose, though. I was in the stadium. Just a great experience. But our professional, David Stefanoff of followneverfade.com, he told you last week Rocky Top was going to win that thing. And, my man, I should have listened to you. Hey, you know what? I'm glad it's a sentimental victory for you being there. Uh, Rocky Top, yes, sir. Uh, quick note, Hammer. I was on to college in Tennessee. I remember when... Tennessee beat Florida for the first time after the after Peyton left, and that to that that stadium shook, and I'll never I'll never been in a louder, more crazier stadium than that when they beat Florida. But I get awesome Rocky Top win. Congratulations to you. Um, this week uh, I'm looking at. By the way, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Hammer. Anyways, I'm looking at Oregon, Illinois, um, Illinois off a big win over Michigan, heading up to Eugene. Um, Oregon uh, basically had a bye week last week, guys. <laughs> they play Purdue. Uh, <laughs> so, early kick, big win for Illinois. This is a bad spot for them, guys. Bad spot. Going up to Eugene. It's going to be early kick up there, 1230 kicks at their time. Um, I think this is a bad spot, Illinois, traveling across the country. I know they played – they played uh, – they got to be almost going to be a Penn State. They're a heckle and jekyll team. They, um, they went to Penn State, gave Penn State hell, Penn State pulled away. I just think this is a spot for Oregon, the number one in the country, to get better. They're at home, early kickoff. I'm laying the 21 points in the Oregon Ducks against the Illini Saturday, guys. How about everything for you guys? All right, so David is on the Ducks against Illinois. Um, a couple things here, David, before we let you go. Um, yes, sir. We got some big action and other sports going on here. We got the NBA starting uh, tonight. And then the rest of the week, we've got the World Series, which probably features the two best teams in baseball. Do you have thoughts on either one of those? Um, baseball, I'm a diehard Dodger fan. I always have been. I think that the World Series is tough. I think I, I want to bet with my head, not my heart. Um, my head says that the Yankees. But that series has, what, five of the best seven, eight baseball players in the game. That's going to be a lot of talent there. Um, I, I, you know, it's, that's going to be a great series. I think it's going to be one for the ages. Uh, NBA kicks off tonight, guys. Um, loving some NBA. I love our Pacers. Um, I think they have a huge shot to win the division. They're at, uh, I think they're at plus 290 to get them. Everybody's on the Bucks. We talked about this earlier. Uh, you know, Giannis is healthy. But I think the Pacers have the best roster in the East, you guys. I think hands from t- hold, to on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. I get it. I'm a Pacer fan because I live in Indiana, but to say they've got the best roster when they were just swept by the Celtics and the Knicks just made all these moves in the offseason. Come on now, David. Pacers are they, they missing Benedict Mather. They didn't have Mather, and that's a huge key to the Pacers. He's probably, he, he could be sixth man of the year this year. That's a huge key. The Pacers are young. They're getting better. I just think they're, um, Porzingis is hurt to start the season. Uh, the Knicks, I don't know. I think the Knicks got a, the, the trade with Minnesota. That, that, was, that was a lateral move. I don't think anybody really got better there. I think losing to uh, kind of might have hurt them a little bit. Um, but, hey, you know, the Celtics are the team to beat. We all know that. But Pacers, I think, you know, they're young, great team, young, co- good coach. Um, we know Cameron. We're, we're diehard Pacers fans. I, sure. It's not, not, not a homer pick. I just think they got the best roster. They got the best bench. And overall, I think there's tons of value, at like plus almost 300 to win the to win their to win their division over Milwaukee. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, I don't see anybody. Chicago Bulls are going to be one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, I don't think uh, Detroit. You know, they're going to be about mediocre. They're going to get better. Uh, you know, we own Milwaukee Bucks. You know, Pacers are plus 290. Let me throw one other else out there. I think the easiest play to, to win the division is Oklahoma City minus 140 to win the division to win their division. All they got to do is beat Minnesota. 
Uh, Minnesota's going to be a train wreck. They're a one-hit wonder. I'm pretty sure they're, they're not going to be like they were, as good as they were this year. Oklahoma City to win the division, and the Pacers are win the division, guys. That's what I love in the NBA. All right. If somebody wants to become a client of yours, how do they do that? Hey, with basketball starting up right now, i got a great great deal going on. You sign up for my basketball package for the year. I give you football for the rest of the year for free right now. I'm down I'm down a little small in college football. We're up a lot in the NFL. But you sign up for me. I'm on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, X, whatever you call it. We're on all those platforms every single day. Message you directly, signed up. I will get you started. But hey, have a great week. Keep it positive. Keep moving, you guys. Thank you again, Robin Hammer. But don't forget to follow Never Fade. All right, that's our professional handicapper that we have for the college football show here, David Stefanoff, followneverfade.com. His college football pick, Oregon, laying the points against Illinois. Rob, you've got action on this. Yeah, man, it's that hook. It's always the hook, right? 21 and a half. Gosh, it's just, I could just see it, right? It's 21. It's got backdoor cover written all over it. Does, it does, and I totally agree with him. Oregon is awesome. Illinois is going to be coming down. Teams that have to go two time zones either way have horrible records. I, but, man, it's that hook, and I'm sure they're going to win by, like, 40. I'm going to be like, ah, oh, that was stupid. Anyway, um, regardless of what the spread is, welcome to big boy football Illinois, right? Right. Michigan stinks this year, and so to steal a phrase from our president, look fat, here's the deal. <laughs> Oregon's giving up six of uh, just sixteen point one points per game. Statistically, it makes them the thirteenth best defense in America. Illinois, not bad either, giving up just eighteen point one points per game. Look, Oregon struggled in that Purdue game. They busted out late because they had the ball over and over and over again, and they're going to score. But they were world beaters. The unders hit in five of Illinois' last seven games. The unders hit in seven uh, of Oregon's last ten. Twenty-one to seven was the final for that Illinois game at Penn State. So. At 54 and a half, if they can keep it, say, 35-14, that's a cover. I'm not saying they can do it, but Oregon's got to come out flat offensively at some point. They only got 35 against Purdue. I'll take the under 54 and a half. All right, I'm going to keep it in the Big Ten here. And full transparency, I thought Nebraska's defense would show up last week. I said Indiana would win, but I thought Nebraska would keep it close and keep it within a touchdown. Boy, were you and I wrong. Oh, we were awful. That that was just, not just a loss, but it was a beatdown. So, Indiana hosting Washington this week. College game day on campus in Bloomington for the first time on a Saturday. They went there for one of those season kickoff Thursday nights against Ohio State. I don't even count that. For the first time on a Saturday, college game day at ESPN is going to be in Bloomington. Last week, Fox was there. All this attention on the Hoosiers, man. And listen, I believe I've bet against Indiana twice this year, and they've beat me twice. So, George W. Bush, how does that old saying go? There's an old saying in Tennessee. I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. If fooled me, we can't get fooled again. Damn right. Not going to get fooled again. I know Indiana's quarterback is out, and he's really good. But this is Tavon Jackson's time. Keep in mind, Tavon Jackson, the kid starting for Indiana this Saturday, was one of the best quarterback recruits coming out of high school. Went to Tennessee down at Rocky Top, but knew he couldn't get on the field with Hendon Hooker, Joe Milton, and incoming Nico. So he makes the transfer. Let's be honest hasn't had a real good coach during his time in Bloomington until now. And I had the chance to speak to a trusted member of the Indiana Hoosier Radio Network this past weekend who told me Signetti is like the quarterback whisperer. He can get the quarterback to put some points up. The area they can't afford to lose people is up front. Yeah. Because I use really uh, shallow up front. But Washington's coming in flying cross country. They're not that good. It's less than a touchdown. I've got faith in Tavon Jackson. He looked good in the second half, looked good in the spring game. He's been there long enough now. I'll lay six and a half with the Fighting Hoosiers. I like that bet. All right, going to take a little break here. When we come back, we got a lot more picks to get to. The picks are coming. They're fast. They're furious. And Rob Kendall is going to get nuts at some point in this show. We are the Degenerates next door.
Back on the Degenerates Next Store, I'm Jason Hammer. Rob Kendall, right across from me. Uh, had a couple of Big Ten picks already, but let's keep it rolling, Rob. Northwestern at Iowa. An Iowa team that screwed me last week. Uh, Iowa is a 12-and-a-half point home favorite over Northwestern. The over-under, just 37-and-a-half. All right, so our man, Scott Long, he's on our uh, NFL show. The Heartlands comedian. He's Mr. Iowa. Can yes. I just read you the correspondence I had with him yesterday because he knows the Iowa Hawkeyes? Scott, am I crazy thinking Iowa can actually cover 12 and a half versus Northwestern? That's a pretty straightforward question, right? Fair like, can, question. Can they cover? Will they cover 12 and a half? The response, Iowa offense is phenomenal. Triple exclamation point. That's all you got. Two Where was this past. phenomenal offense that I was told about last week? Thank you. Up in in East Lansing against Michigan State when a certain somebody had some scratch on him. Where was this triple exclamation point offense then? Yeah, so he didn't give me an answer at all, but here's what I do now, okay, because I've seen these guys play enough. And I had concerns about your bet with them because I was a different team at home compared to on the road. So Northwestern has scored five or less in two of their last four games. Five or less. I was a different team at home versus on the road. Twelve and a half is a lot, but Iowa's offense, like Scott said, is actually pretty good. They can score some points. Defense is stifling as always. I, like, I know you got sucker at Michigan State, but if you can't score, you can't win or cover. That's a ton of points. I'm going to take Iowa lay in the 12 and a half. I'm going to turn my attention to a game that used to be like the signature game of the college football season. And now we're talking about it after Northwestern and Iowa. <laughs> Florida State. At Miami. <laughs> Florida State is a disaster. And the Hurricanes, they are a 20 and a half point favorite. Now, I see 20 and a half on FanDuel. Yeah. We say all the time shop around, treat sports betting like it's Black Friday, do some shopping, find the best number, find the best deal, and go with it. So I found 20 and a half on FanDuel and. That's where I'm hitching my wagon. Cam Ward is in Heisman mode. Yep. So they're going to try to let him put as many points on the board as possible. Miami, they need style points. While some SEC teams might be able to lose twice and still make it into the college football schedule or playoff because of the schedule, the ACC is not like that. There are no other big, massive, marquee games that Miami can play to where they could avenge a loss, right? So style points matter, and let's be honest, it's always fun to just absolutely beat the dog piss out of your rival. I mean, and that's what Miami's going to do to Florida State here. Not only is it for the Heisman race, not only is it for style points, but it's good for in-state recruiting. Because you've got the U, you've got Florida State, you've got the Gators, all competing in the fertile recruit ground of Florida for the same athletes. So when you beat them by 30 or 40, it sends a message to recruits. I love the U in this one. I'm going to lay 20 and a half with the Hurricanes. I love this bet. And here's, look, I'm, a, I'm just a bad broadcaster because that, I wanted to take that game. It was 21 and a half. By the time I had made my five picks, it moved to 20 and a half. I thought I really should take that game, and then I thought I'm just too lazy to change one of my other picks. Number one, you're number one in your time slot <laughs> in radio, 9 to noon. The number one rated midday show, the host, Rob Kendall, just tells us, ah, it's too lazy to go back and check my work. Uh, Rob, let's check in with another team that... Surprise, surprise, screwed me last week. <laughs> BYU, the Storm and Mormons, they are at Central Florida. BYU, one and a half point road favorite over under sitting at 55 and a half. Yeah, they did you dirty last week, but they have beaten some known quantities. SMU, K-State are both ranked. Baylor. Now, last week, and this is what did you in, their quarterback threw two interceptions versus Oklahoma State. Yes, but they still survived in terms of winning the game by three. And they, they gave up some big plays on did. the ground, they too. Did. Yeah. And U U UCF has lost four in a row, though they did play well against Iowa State. They almost won that game. Iowa State highly ranked. Uh, BYU can score early. They can score often. 
I think it'll be very tough for UCF to keep up. The spread is one and a half. And what sort of home field advantage are you getting at UCF? Like, who's the passionate UCF fan? I'll take BYU lay in the one and a half. A couple of years ago, I hitched my wagon to a certain team from the Lone Star State, and we rode them to win after win. Odds makers, for whatever reason, had a hard time catching up with what was happening down at North Texas. Yeah, the Mean Green. So this week, Rob, Tulane is at North Texas. Yeah! Tulane is a seven and a half point road favorite at North Texas. The over under 65 and a half. You've got the green wave, you got the mean green. Both teams are five and two. North Texas is coming off of a 52 to 44 loss to Memphis. Now, in that game, North Texas had 653 yards of total offense. Good grief. But they allowed Memphis to have 526 yards of total offense. Tulane, on the other hand, they average 39.9 points per game. So, I'm looking at this objectively. I know that's a big number, but I've learned my lesson from last week. Do not be scared off by a big number. We're going to ride the lightning. We're going to go over 65 and a half. Tulane at North Texas. Green wave, mean green. We're going to make the green. We're going over that total. Rob, Cincinnati at Colorado. Colorado's always tricky. You never know what you're going to get with the Bucs. Colorado is a four and a half point home favorite over under 57 and a half. All right. I was inspired by this. There's a whole bunch of numbers I don't recognize in our group betting chat. Somebody said I should take this. So it seemed, it looked as bad as I did last week. What, who am I to say I shouldn't take some advice, even if I don't know the person it was from? I mean, what, at this point, what do we have to lose? So I saw this and I said, okay, I got to put some, I got to put something behind it, right? I got to put some. You got to believe in it. Yeah. I mean, I thought, okay, I got to get outside my own picks right now because I'm so bad. George Costanza <laughs> once said, and I quote, it's not a lie if you believe it. Yeah, and here's the thing. Look, if I'm going to be totally honest, this is mostly about if I'm headed for a golden sombrero, this 1030 start will at least force me to suffer all day before having to accept my shame. A whole day I will have hope of not having a golden sombrero because of this 1030 start. Look, defense, but the reality is defense is going to be optional in this. The, uh, I think the numbers should actually be higher. And I think the odds makers are getting tricked by the fact that Cincinnati has done well the past couple weeks, but it's against backup quarterbacks in UCF, who we talked about earlier, and is Arizona State. The last time they played a starting QB, they gave up 44 to Texas Tech. Colorado can score. They put up 48, 34, 28 the last three games. We all know defense is a secondary option for the Colorado Buffaloes. I could see this being like a 34-24 34-24 type of deal, which gets me across the finish line. Whoever that random number was in our group chat, I hope they're right. With those words of wisdom, we're going to take a break. <laughs> and when we come back, I have got action on Friday night for you. Not only do I have a Tuesday play for you, I have a Friday night play, which means I'm probably looking at 0-2 <laughs> heading into Saturday. Coming right back with the Degenerates next door. Back. <laughs> On the Degenerates next door, Rob Kendall made a great point during the break. Man, we're kind of in depression mode here after (laughs) last week. Yeah, man, it was a stinker last week. Full transparency. When we stink, we'll let you know. But we do the homework. We crunch the numbers. We didn't do anything different last week that we did the week before. I went 5-0 the week before, 0-5 last week. Let's try to get it back. And how about some Friday night lights here? This is going to be a fun game to watch on a Friday. Boise State at UNLV. Boise State, three and a half point road favorite at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. The over under is 65 and a half. Now, the winner of this game is on track to go to the college football playoff. They're going to be one of those non power conference winners that will probably end up. In the top 12, Boise State is five and one. Their one loss was a decent effort at Oregon. They were in it. They were in it. And they lead the conference in total offense. They're scoring 46.8 points per game. Last time they played, uh, they 
went on the road to Hawaii and racked up 450 yards of offense and did not commit a turnover. And oh, by the way, they have a Heisman Trophy candidate running back. Now UNLV, on the other hand, their quarterback just quit on them earlier in the year because he (laughs) didn't get his NIL money. But the thing about UNLV is they haven't skipped a beat. They've been just as good with the other guy that they were with Captain NIL. Now I understand why he didn't get his money. Uh, UNLV's got a pretty good resume, but they also gave up 44 points to Syracuse, 34 to Utah State. Boise State gave up 30 to Utah State and gave up 82 points in their first two games of the year, which were Georgia Southern and Oregon. So you add all this up, you put it in a pot, you stir it around like a witch's cauldron. We're going over the total, 65 and a half. I am going over a lot of these games. I'm not scared of the big number this week. I think you're going to see some points, especially on the fast track at Allegiant Stadium. Over is the play. Now, I've got one question for you, Rob. Yes. After last week's debacle, after everything we've been through, Mm. Are you ready to get nuts? I think All so. Right. You want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. Now you want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. Now more than ever, Rob, let's get nuts. Yeah, I feel like kind of half-assed the let's get nuts last week. It was only plus 450 on the odds of what I what I picked. Um, by the way, we have a, a, a colleague who works here who takes our picks, and when we win, we never hear from him, but when we lose, we hear from him all the time. That's just the worst kind of dude. Just the worst kind of low T, just candy ass type of dude. Yeah, and he seemed very surprised that the let's get nuts doesn't hit more often. I said, that's the premise of the bit. It's It's a big, long shot that you're doing. It's called let's get nuts. And you've hit one of these earlier this year, I believe. Yeah, so here's the deal. We're going to get really nuts this week, Hammer. Are you ready for this, Jelly? Let's get it. All right, so we're calling this the double-digit parlay cover. Let's go. And all of these games have double-digit favorites covering their spreads. You ready? Bring it. We got Miami, minus 20 and a half versus FSU. Ooh, I'm on the other side. We got Notre Dame, minus 12 and a half versus Navy. We got Bama, minus 13 and a half versus Missouri. We got James Madison, Minus 24 and a half for you chalk eating weasel. Did you take any points with anybody? I'm saying I'm giving the points. I'm laying the I'm laying the points. Laying the points means you're taking the favorite. Yeah, but I'm still giving 20 and a half points. It's a 50 50 shot. You put them all together. Can I say my last one? Texas minus 18 and a half versus Vandy. You put them all together. It's plus 2405. A $5 bet pays you $120.27. All right. You want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. That's a one, two, three. Now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. The five-team parlay. Chalk-eating weasel. It's not, but it's 50-50 shot. I'm saying all these teams are going to win by more than their number. What are you mad at me about? Here's the recap that I've got for you. Sam Houston at FIU. That game's tonight, okay? Uh, over 46 and a half, but as we said earlier, the caveat is... If you find out Sam Houston's quarterback is abort. out, abort. Cash your bet out because he's their offense. Their leading passer and their leading rusher. I like the Hoosiers. We're going to lay six and a half. I got faith in Tavon Jackson as the backup. Plus, Washington stinks. The Hurricanes, we're laying 20 and a half. And then we're going over 65 and a half. Tulane at North Texas, over 66 and a half. Boise State at UNLV. I've got... Three overs this week, and you know what that makes me. Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet your captain. Captain over. Gentlemen, welcome aboard. Captain, your navigator, Mr. Unger, and your first officer, Mr. Dunn. Unger? Over. Over. Dunn. I'm Captain Over. Rob, recap the board. Got Cincinnati at Colorado. We're going over 57 and a half. Texas A&M hosting LSU under 53 and a half. Iowa laying 12 and a half at home against Northwestern. Oregon. At home against Illinois, we're going under 54 and a half. And BYU laying one and a half versus Central Florida. Oh, yeah. And on the let's get nuts, 
The double-digit parlay cover, Miami minus 20.5, Notre Dame minus 12.5, Bama minus 13.5, James Madison minus 24.5, and and Texas minus 18.5. This is the week we get back. This is the week we get right. Just like when one of those SEC teams like Alabama has a loss, and then next week they've got some scrub from the MAC on the schedule. It's the get-right game. This is the get-right week, baby. We're doing it. Let's go. For Rob Kendall. For professional handicapper David Stefanoff of followneverfade.com, my name is Jason Hammer, and as always, may the odds be ever in your favor. We'll talk to you Thursday for the NFL edition of The Degenerates Next Door.